What's up, you guys? Welcome to this episode of the DR Show. We have uh, Gigi McGree. Hi. Hi. Superstar. Look, it's so freaking fabulous today. I have to ask because you just came in and you're just glowing and shit. What are you wearing today? This is insane. Um. Oh, God. Nothing crazy. I mean, my girlfriend owns this brand called IMG. I'm pretty sure everyone has in like the world has heard of that. But oh, I yeah. wear a lot of her yeah. stuff um, because she's dope. And she's been my best friend since I was like 16. And then this is something that I found in my wardrobe. Oh, and this is a Hanes tank top, and this is a Chrome Hearts necklace. And <laughs> oh, Kate had that. <laughs> yeah. Our homie Kate, yeah. The Chrome yeah. Hearts are a big thing around here in LA. It is. Yeah, I I keep finding it on, like, this, this... I don't know where this came from. It just turned up in my room one day. And I was kind of like, okay, someone left this at my house at a, after a party or something. Oh, man. <laughs> no, lucky me. Well, okay, from Australia. Mm -hmm. We love the accent. Thank you. Where so, are you from? I'm from New York. But you have, like, a little bit of an accent as well. Really? Uh-huh. People say that. I think because I've lived in Europe for, like, a few years. Okay. With a lot of Russian roommates. Yeah. I feel like it just mixes me up you, a little bit. You sound like a little Euro. Oh, man. <laughs> You're like... Wait, New Yorkers usually are like, no, I'm about to do a really bad Boston accent. Just ignore me. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, take us back to Australia. Like, you know, you're a little girl. When did you discover your love for music? It was something I kind of fell into which is crazy like I feel like growing up especially in America it's crazy like everyone's like what are you gonna do for the rest of your life like what are you going to college for mm -hmm. um and I was going to university to do property um development I was doing property economics no way and I was my dad owned a bunch of nightclubs back in Australia and I was obsessed with throwing like raves like I used to throw like I mean I was, I think, 18 years. So I was, I was legal drinking age. I'm like, hmm, I don't let me say anything illegal. Um, but I started throwing these, like, massive parties. And then um, it was back in, like, the 2000s, like, electro phase. So it was, like, when, when like, Bang Gang and, mm -hmm. like, Bag Raiders and, like, Ajax were coming up. And they were all my friends. And so we'd throw these, like, huge parties. And then they were like, Gigi, you need to learn how to DJ. And, like, yeah. you know, your taste in music is so good. And I was like, okay. So then I DJed at this like local pub for $25 an hour and I used to do six hours every Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And then um, I bought my own equipment and then it was kind of like everything just kind of started flowing. Like I toured with this guy, um, his name is Nightmare. And then he asked me, he was like, do you sing? And I was like, absolutely. Never sang, like never, never even thought about singing. I, I've written poetry since I was a little kid, but like, and then I wrote this song called Frontlines and it became like it was it's one of Nightmare and Zed's Dead's biggest songs. And it kind of just like after that, it was just and then I kind of just got more into like songwriting and I learned how to play the guitar and I'm currently learning how to play the drums and just like, I don't know, everything just like I'm very much like a, I just go where the wind takes me, mm -hmm. but I go really aggressively Damn. as everyone in the Monster Cat team will tell you. I'm Let's very aggressive go. about everything. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of... And I just, like, I don't know. I just take things as they come, you yeah. know? I want to do the most all the time. What is the music scene like in Australia? Because I feel like people talk about music in L.A., New York, um, about Sydney. I haven't been home in a minute for, like, a long enough period of time. But, like, I know the band, like, the chats are really big. And, like, obviously, like, you know, we have Flume, we have Tame Impala, G Flip is crushing. Like, I feel like artists that come out of Australia are like very individual like they have their own sound they have their own thing going on because it's like an island so far away from everyone it's it's a country not an island um it's you know to to make a difference you really have to do something unique and and kind of try and make your way through it so i think that that is something that australian artists pride themselves in which is cool but yeah i honestly i haven't been home enough to like know what the scene is over there <laughs> which is sad and speaking of sound mm -hmm. I'm a fan. I was, like, honestly, your sound reminds me of nostalgic, like, when I was at <laughs> Izu with my fake ID, Electric Zoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you know that festival, but it's, like... I played that festival. The height times, of dubstep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. excision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, like... Are you a dubstep fan? I'm a huge dubstep fan, obviously. Like, everything that I play... I mean, I'm more of, like, a... I love, like the old wave of dubstep or the older wave of dubstep like um like scream and like obviously zed's dead like their eyes on fire remakes like pretty oh, wow. much changed my life mm -hmm. after listening to that i was like and that's kind of also like another thing that influenced my singing because like i would listen to that and sing that and i would be like her voice is so delicate and like it's so soft 
And now, like, the more I found myself as who I am as an artist, my voice is, like, projecting into this, like, screamo, angsty, like, I don't know, psycho... Can I swear? Mm-hmm. Bitch. Yes! <laughs> Always got to double check. Oh, I was yeah. like, how do I find another like word? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a... All my sets are extremely heavy. Um, because there's nothing that that feeling of like when you watch everyone's face go whoa when the drop mm-hmm. happens like that for me basically is what orgasming feels like. Oh man, yeah. That's one thing I wanted to ask you about too is you've played. Orgasming. <laughs> um, we can talk about yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, but no, I mean from Electric Z- uh, Daisy is it called right? EDC. Yeah. Ultra. Yeah. You've played like some of the biggest festivals ever. Yeah. What does it feel like to be on that stage? Also, in like solo, kind of sometimes. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. Solo. So, I mean, I am a show pony. I like, I love to be watched. Like, I'm like, put a camera on me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm better when I'm watched by like eighty thousand people than I am one on one. For some reason, that's just my thing. Um, I love it. Like, you sometimes have to kick me off because I'm like, I'm not finished. Just a little bit more. Oh it, it makes it's it's. I don't know. Like, I've never tried any hardcore drugs, but I assume that that's that's the closest feeling to that. No way. Yeah. Oh it's my god. So, are you like, you know, every artist has their own thing. Are you like the kind of like party artist, like at the show? Like, what kind of are you like drinking your water and your tea backstage when you go up? You're like, you have your rituals. What kind of (laughs) artist are you performing behind the scenes? I'm honestly a psychopath. I'm like just bouncing around and like I have chronic ADHD. So Mm. it's like, I'm just like, (laughs) I don't really drink um, like anymore. I kind of got that done when I was younger. Um, I don't really have a ritual. I kind of just like, if I have like a band with me, if I have like a, like a TM or whoever's with me, I'm just like, let's fucking go. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, I'll make one of them smack me on the ass and off I go. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm, I'm a simple girl, simple, crazy girl. Okay. Something super, super cool that everyone's so excited about is your Spotify releases but how do you pronounce it's spotify sessions Sessions. um yeah it's so cool and the team at spotify is so awesome and i'm so grateful that they like support me and love me as much as they do um but basically i recorded i I did my very own version of hillary Mm -hmm. come clean because that song is like i don't know like growing up as a kid like since i was like 10 years old i was like that was my shit Mm -hmm. and i play that at the end of my sets and everyone goes off and then when I was talking to the team over there, I was like, guys, I'm going to do Hillary Duff, Come Clean. Mm. And, like, they're just so obsessed with it, which makes me so obsessed with it more because it's like when everyone's just so hyped on something, it's just like, you're just like, yeah! Do you remember Hillary's rock phase? No. She had, like, a rock phase where, like, you should check out those those videos. Oh, my God, I want to recreate them. She's like, yeah, she, yeah, with the band. Oh, my God, like, yeah, she's such dope. an icon. Yeah. Um, and then I also did like a re reworked version of my song Blood Rush because Blood Rush was actually my favorite song off my uh, latest EP Dichotomy that I released earlier this year. And um, I made it feel like more like a Nirvana, like Cranberries. Mm. I don't know. It was so cool to go in and rework that song because that song to me, like it's so emotional and it's just like, I don't know. It was cool to like give it a new life in a way that like, I always wanted it to go in this like more like punky rock tronic lane, but it it ended up being like an ambient kind of like dubstepy thing because that's I don't know it just ended up being like that. So I was like, cool, like that's its purpose. And then when they were like, what song do you want to you know rework? I was like, oh, Blood Rush. Mm. And it's you know that's again like trusting the universe that like I knew that that song had another was going to get another life. I want to talk about your move to LA. Yeah. I know you've been in New York. You've been around a bit. Yeah. But, like, was there a culture shock? Um, no, not particularly. Like, L.A. and Sydney are really, really similar. So it's, like, I think for me the hardest thing is leaving my family. Like, I am extremely close to my parents. Like, I'm, like, a mommy and daddy's girl to, like, the fucking maximum extreme. And, like, that's the hardest thing because it's, like, when you're having a shitty day and you just, like, want to go home and, like, hug your mom. I can't do that. So, like, my friends are now, like, my my family. And it's just, like, I get home on the couch and I, like, cuddle with my, like, housemate. And I'm, like, love me. Are you going to go to Australia for the for the holidays at all? Or no? I am. There I'm actually, I am surprising my mom. I'm flying home on Sunday. She has <gasps> no idea. No way. Yeah. And she's, like, she got, because she called me the other day and she was, like, so you're not coming home for Christmas? And I'm like, no, because I'm so busy around that period of time. 
And I was like, no, I can't. And I saw her face and I was like, oh my God. So I literally like got off the phone to her and like looked at flights and I was like, okay, that's a little expensive, but my mom was worth everything. Mm -hmm. So I booked a flight and I'm leaving on Sunday. This Sunday? Yes. Was your mom and dad always like, I know your dad has been in like in the nightclub mm -hmm. scene. Are they always supportive of what you're doing? How They're proud so of you are they? so supportive. Have they seen you on one of those stages like, My dad know. came to, I played at Coachella this year. My dad came. That's insane. Um, and he was like side of stage. And then when I finished, he cried. And then I no. cried. And then everyone was crying. And then I'm like, dad, don't, don't. My makeup, I never do makeup. Um, but, and my mom is just like, they're the most supportive. Like, I'm a wild child. Like, I post the craziest shit. I'm so provocative. I'm so comfortable in my skin. Like, I pride myself on that. Like, you know, I'm so sex positive. And my parents are just like, go off. Mm. You know, they they brought me up to be a really good grounded person and my morals like i mean what i believe are really good um so they're just like happy to watch me do what i love that's insane yeah um let's talk about some of the cool collabs you've done yeah. with royal the serpent that's right that's not um, bitch. bitch yes that's with ryan oh, yeah how <laughs> did you guys come up like the making of that song what were you guys doing were you i thinking? so i wrote that song um and then i was like listening to it in the car one day and i was like damn man like this would be so cool if it had like another girl on it because it's just like a female empowerment mm -hmm. anthem i literally wrote it about an ex-boyfriend of mine that was just like a loser and i was like just calling him a bitch um and and then I was chatting with Ryan and I sent it to her and I was like, do you like this? Like, you know, I would love for you to cut something. She literally came in like three days later, cut it. And then that was the record. Wow. Yeah. I, I think all good music or like all natural, like organic music comes really fast. And it's just like the, the vibe and the flow is there. And it's just like when you going into sessions, I feel like sometimes if I get stuck on something for like a couple of hours, I'm like, this ain't it. Mm. You know, like most of most of my songs get written within an hour. What's your songwriting process like? How do you start? Oh God, I literally come in with ideas and then I'm like, okay guys, everything that I've written is personal to me. Mm -hmm. Like every single thing that I've written has either happened to me or is like I'm going through whatever it is. And I'm like, this happened to me this week. This happened to me today. This happened to me on the drive here. And then I look at photos. Um, like I'll go on Pinterest and look at photos and then just things I usually like will like get a guitar and like start riffing and then I'll lay a harmony uh, lay, a, lay a melody down and then words usually spit out when you're doing that and then like just that's the end you know I don't overthink anything because it's like I feel like people put so much emphasis on like making sure it's the best record in mm. the entire world and everyone's gonna love it and stream it I'm just like I'm making music for me I know, that's right. I asked you <clears throat> how to pronounce your last name just to like triple, quadruple check. And she was like, don't overthink it. I was like, yeah, okay. don't overthink <laughs> it. Like, that's kind of how I do everything in life. I, like, do. I feel like we spend so much time worrying about what everyone else thinks. And the only thing that matters is what we think. Because mm -hmm. it's like, that's what a true artist is. You're just, you're creating and you're creating because it's coming from you, you know? And I think it's like, if you put on so much emphasis on like, will people love this? Will I, you know, will this get in the top, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's the wrong reasons. And that's I think true. that that's like, also being in LA, like it's crazy. Like, you know, I was talking to my friend about this the other day and it's like, even collaborating with other artists, I feel like it's come to such a point where people only want to work with people if they have X amount of followers or like, you know, X amount of streams or whatever it is. Like, I don't even really look at that. Like, I'm just like, they're dope. I want to work with them. Wow. Because like, I think art is like, it's something that you have to like love and be obsessed with, not just want it for the quick little like bits, you know, or to, to, to be famous or whatever the reason is, you know? Wow. It seems like you're a really like spiritual, like in tune person. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about spirituality. <laughs> um, you have a cool tattoo, by the way. She's a witch. Yeah. Ah! Um, yeah. I I practice witchcraft. I have. Um, I kind of. I've 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 always known it's something. I mean, everyone's spiritual. It's just whether they choose to tap into it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always known that I had a gift when I was a kid because I, I like, I'm a clairvoyant. I see things before they happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and it's happened. I would say stuff to my mom and I'd be like, mom, like blah, blah, blah. I saw this. And then like, you know, a month or a week or whatever it was later, like it would happen. And my mom was like, wow, like you're special. And my mom, like 
my mom is really spiritual as well. So she kind of like helped me guide my like where I wanted to go and like how I wanted to go on this journey. And she never pushed me or forced me. Um, and then during COVID, I had a bit of time off as everyone did. And I delved really heavily into witchcraft. Um, and now I'm obsessed. Is witchcraft kind of, it's called like Wicca, right? So Wicca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it like, I mean, what does it really look like in comparison to, you know, this, the movies and things like that? I mean, the the coolest thing about witchcraft is it's all based on love. Like everything stems from love. It's like imperfect, imperfect love and perfect trust. Like that's literally what it is. Like as above, so below, like everything is in sync. And it's like, as long as you're doing things for the right reason, the right things will come back to you. Like karma is a really big thing in witchcraft. It's like, you know, people always like, oh, are you going to hex me? Hmm. And I'm like, what if, that? Oh a God. lot of people, you know, they, they, they think of witchcraft and they oh, yes, think, yes, they yes. think of dark magic, mm. which is like, you know, I do delve into dark magic and, but it's like, it's like karma. Like you don't, you don't, you don't want to go and hurt someone because that's going to come back and hurt you eventually. And the same thing is witchcraft. Like you lead everything with love and light and like great stuff happens. And it's really cool because it's like, the more you get into it, the more you realize about yourself and everything is like a self journey to me. And like, you know, I do worship certain goddesses, but like at the end of the day, like I'm my own goddess, which is like, it's just, it's all about feminine divinity and like, you know, Let's getting go. to your high self and just being a good person and acting from love, which Can is- Can a boy be a witch as well? Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not like, um, it's not like sexist like I mean I, I believe that everyone's a witch like you know my housemate my friend who's living with us right now he comes out to me like I was doing witchcraft last night and he comes out to me and he goes Gigi I think I'm a witch oh my god and I was like <laughs> <laughs> and I was like yes you are king go off oh shit um yeah I don't know the exact term for it I'm assuming it's just a witch like you know I did I have filmed a, a movie with my best friend. Um, yes, I want to get into that film. Yeah. Unscripted. Unscripted, yes. What does unscripted mean? That means there's it's just like, like reality. Wow. Yeah, so it's just like, it's basically like we don't have a script. We just kind of talk about, you know, we're just going, we're just shooting. Yeah. Um, and we go to Salem and we're kind of going in through the history and what witchcraft means to us as modern day witches because, you know, witchcraft goes back to like, I don't even know when, like the 1800s or whatever it was, but probably later. But, um, you know, it's just as a, as a modern witch, like it's, it, I think witchcraft just has such a stigma about it because you see it in the movies, like mm -hmm. especially like, you know, The Craft is one of my favorite movies of all time, but you see Nancy and she's just like, oh, you know, like, mm -hmm. and it can be like that. It depends how like aggressive you want to go about it. I don't believe in ever doing sh things to hurt people. You know, I do witchcraft for myself and for others if they need, like, the coolest thing about witchcraft is it's just like it's healing and it's just I don't know it's it makes you feel like ecstasy all the time damn does it ever tie into your music the making oh yeah really oh yeah is there like a specific potion for making music I don't really do like I do potions and I and I do castings and I do I use a lot of herbs and I use a lot of crystals and I use a lot of cards and I use a Ouija board but like a Ouija board is that real oh yeah Oh yeah, I'm. I, I. I mean, that's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my thing. Um, but I. I think that the the main thing about witchcraft is that you're talking to your higher self, and your higher self is like your spirit guides and your like goddess, and like that's just in you. It's mm -hmm. whether you allow it to flow out. So it's like you know. I'll go into a session and if I get stuck, I'll like meditate for a second and I'll call upon my spirit guides and usually they'll be like, mm, like maybe do this maybe do that or maybe they don't even come and if they don't come i'm kind of like cool i'm just gonna leave it mm -hmm. you know everything is just witchcraft is like you just trust your intuition the more you trust yourself like the greater things happen Absolutely. i can ramble tell us when this um project comes out this film um to be determined to be determined it's coming i just don't have a date yet that is so cool yeah yeah. Wow, what does that feel like? Do you want to get more into like the uh, like the film world? Is that were I am getting more into the film world. Um, there's lots of other cool things happening in the works for me in 2023. 2023. So, yeah. Can you give us a little bit of like a foreshadow for 2023? Uh, or any music foreshadow? Um, I mean, I'm doing a lot of scoring in 2023, which is really cool. Something that I've been really wanting to get into. Um, 
the music that I have written for 2023, I know a lot of people say this, but like my entire team over here at Monster Cat can vouch this is the best shit I've ever written. Like I am so excited. Like I've been working with this vocal coach, Melissa Cross. She's like a screamo vocal coach. I've literally, I know, I've heard of her. She's the best. I was like, she's a very like, She's the best. Screamo, yes, for screamo. So I have figured out how to do that. World class. And um, I'm going to start showcasing that in 2023, Yay. which is like, and it's also like the coolest music I've ever written because it's just like, it's all about feminine divinity and it's all about things that I've been going through in my life. And I feel like the end of 2022, like what we're in now has been like the biggest shift change I've ever had because it's like, I feel I don't know. I feel like I love myself so much. And that's like, you know, we go through these like crazy relationships with like lovers and And friends and like all of it, you know, and it shapes us up to be who we are. And I feel like I fully, you know, I'm forever working on myself, but I'm so happy with who I am as a person. And it's like the pain that I felt going through, like, you know, traumas and whatever has come out through my music. And like, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. But yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm so stoked because it's just like, I'm showcasing a side that no one else is, like I haven't ever showcased in my, yes. And it's like, my voice is just like, I've never loved my voice. Like I've just like sang and people love it and I don't understand it. And I'm like, it's cool. I am obsessed with like, I like listen to myself and I'm like, let's go you know and that's such a cool feeling to like love yourself and like love your voice and love your because your voice is your instrument and like mm-hmm. just be obsessed with it and like i get so ex- i know was never one of those people that like put my music on in the car but i like mm-hmm. I, I finish a song and like i'm like who wants to listen today and everyone's mm-hmm. like my friends go off and like i get so excited to send it to the team and like I don't know. It's so cool to love what you do so much. And then like, but like really love it, you know, like, and I'll, and even if these songs like never see the light of day, which they all are, but like, I'll be so stoked that they just exist. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, speaking of getting vulnerable, I wanted to, um, yo, know, like if anyone follows you on Twitter, they know. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I'm so psycho on Twitter. <laughs> Twitter to me, it's so funny. Twitter in Australia, like, isn't big, so I never really, like, I didn't really understand Twitter. So for me, it's kind of like a little baby diary. Yeah. I just write the weirdest, craziest shit. Situationships. Oh, yeah, the one that I did yesterday. Yeah, that was your latest It's like everyone has that one situationship that fucked you up the rest of your life. (laughs) Because it's true. Sometimes situationships hurt more than a relationship because you, there's that, like, it could have been. And you're like, what just happened? How did I just get so derailed? Yeah, man. What's your type? What, what's your type? I don't have a type. I honestly, like, I, like, I, I have dated a spectrum of people. Um, I don't have one. Nah. Like, one that do looks like... the like, punk rock boys? I do. Face tats. I do. Oof. That's, like, my new thing is, like, face hats. I'm like, oh, my God. Girl. I know. I'm like, sit down. I know. I know. <laughs> and, like, that? I see a boy that's like, covered in tattoos. They probably look like they weren't going to hurt me. And I'm like, how can I fix you? <laughs> but it's so funny. Like, I was, I was talking with my friend the other day when we were in the studio. And, like, I was, like, you know, singing him the lyrics that I wrote for this song. Mm-hmm. And I looked at him and I was like, am I toxic? And he was like, what? And I was like, wow. I, 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 am I the toxic one? And he was like, Gigi, we're all a little toxic. And I was like, okay, I'm just being toxically vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And he was like, everything that you're talking about, people have done and felt. So mm-hmm. don't ever be scared. And I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Anyway, let's get back to writing. Oh, my God. You know, because it's like life is crazy. And like this world that we live in, like, I feel like everything moves so fast. Mm-hmm. Everything is just like, you know, with like TikTok and like, these like 15 second little things that you have to give to people to hope that they like or like to to make them stick. It's like everything is so fast. And like, I feel like relationships, Mm -hmm. especially with like lovers have become so much more like you go in fast and Mm -hmm. then you, you know, you you leave even faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel the same. Yeah, I definitely, I don't know, man. There's definitely a disconnect, I think, with people. Yeah. I don't know if it was, like, post-COVID stuff. Yeah. I think, like, for me, at least, just personally, I'm just having... Yeah. Yeah, Maybe I'm on, like, a, you know... I'm on a a male detox right now. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I don't know if I'll go. I think we all need to, like, male detox. 
I mean, it's good to just be with yourself. I feel like I've just, like, I don't know, like, I'm such a big lover that when I, like, feel something, I'm like, let's go. I know, that's why I'm almost afraid. I'm like, okay, we can't dive in too deep again but right how do now. You, but, but then, like. But then you're just oppressing yourself. Yeah, that's and it's like, never do. suppress yourself. Yeah. I'm like, I'm the kind of person that, like, I'll jump so far, and if I fall on my face, I'm like, cool, I get to write music. So Damn. I'm like, whatever. But yeah, I, I am taking, I mean, at this very moment, I'm just like spending more time with myself. Like on Sunday, last Sunday, I actually had the weekend off and I sat in bed and read for like three hours. Wow. I don't remember. I don't think I've ever done that wow. in my entire life. You just stay in your room at like solo. I literally okay. stayed in my room. I put on candles. I put had the door open. I was like lying half in the sun, like half not in the sun. And I was just reading and I was like, Wow. I'm either getting old because I love this mm-hmm. so much or, like, I didn't realize how much I needed this. Mm-hmm. Just so, time alone. Time alone. Alone time. But it's, like, it's, it's yeah, it's just, like, time. I think it's more, not alone time. I think it's more time outside your brain. Mm-hmm. You know, like, we live in our heads and we're consistently creating and wanting to do the most all the time. And it's, like, sometimes when you're just focusing on words on paper, it just takes you away, takes you out of, like, the noise. You're a queen. Thank you. We're so excited for this. I actually like to call myself a king. You're a king. Yes, king. Thank you. (laughs) We're so excited for this next release. I can't, now that, yeah, now that we know that this is going to be one of your most exciting releases. Honestly, I'm just, I'm so stoked. It's just, I mean, the song is called Be Careful What You Say. Mm -hmm. Um, It was written about a time in my life not that long ago where people were talking things about me. (gasps) No. And... You know? This is not high school. Yeah, we don't do that. Mm-mm. We don't do that to a witch. No. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Gotta see <laughs> that. Ah. <laughs> you know, people are talking. That's how you know you're doing something right. Oh, exactly. Facts. And I'm also just like, when people do things like that, I'm just like, man, you must really hate that I'm up here. Oh, let's go, baby. Yeah. Let's you know, go. I think I look at everything with like, try and look at everything with a positive perspective. And for me, it's just like when people do weird, malicious shit, you're just kind of like, ouch, that hurts to be you. Mm-hmm. And it's all part of it. It's all part you know, of the journey. Of and I, thank you. You give me good music to write about. Mm-hmm. Like, you give me great subjects to write about. I know. And it seems like you're obviously, like, super grounded. Yeah. And everything. We were talking about Britney Spears earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not to say she's not grounded, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm not Britney Spears. <laughs> No, I'm 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 fun. I'm crazy. I'm, I literally have psycho tatto- tattooed on my hand. But, like, you know, I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm at the core. I'm a really... I'm a really good person and a big lover. Yeah. I like how you say lover, Australian way. Lover. Lover. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for having for me. For watching the episode with King Gigi. Hey. And we're going to we're going to be waiting for this next release. So Yeah, we are. See you next time.